Hello everyone. I hope you have installed Apache NiFi and created your first flow. If not, please check out the links in the description. So today we are going to discuss about the most important component in Apache NiFi, that is NiFi processors. As per the definition given in NiFi documentation, processor is the NiFi component that is used to listen for incoming data, pull data from external sources, publish data to external sources, and do some transformation on the data as well. Let's get started. So let us create a process group first. Let me call this process group a sample process group. Let's go inside this. Let me search the processor to read the data from a file system. There is a processor called list file, which does exactly the same. Now that I have uh, dragged first processor, I'll create another processor called fetch file. I'll explain about them in detail later. And let me drag one more processor called put file. So as uh, explained in the NiFi documentation, all the processor have one objective. Either they are going to read the data from any sources or they are going to write the data to any source or do some transformation in the data set. If you do a right click on this processor, you can see there are multiple options available. The first option says configure. When you click on the configure screen, it gives you five different tabs. So first is the setting. I want to call this processor read data. Now, when I do apply, you can see the processor name is now changed to read data. Again, if I want to configure it, let's configure the other properties of this processor. The main objective is that we want to uh, read the data from a lo location. So we have to pass on the directory from where we want to read the data. So let's say I want to read the data from this folder called as Australia weather. Once I have given this property, it will go into this particular location. It will listen if there any new file coming in, it will read those files. There are other properties as well, whether we want to uh, read the subdirectories or not. So if you set it to true, it will read the subdirectories as well. There are other properties like file filter. If you want to read a specific file, then you can pass on the uh, regex here. List file will only give us the list of the files. It won't read the actual data. Fetch file on the other hand will read the actual data that is present in the location provided by the list file. So these two processor works in conjunction. You have to click on this and drag it till the other processor. And this will give you a screen to create a connection. If you see, there's something called as a relationship. Whenever we want to connect one processor to another, there would be a relationship that you have to define. So for this particular processor called as list file, we only have one particular relationship defined as success. So let's connect it with the success relationship. Now, if you look into the fetch file processor, if I want to connect this processor to a put file processor, I'll again bring it to the put file. And now you see there are multiple options available in the relationship. So whenever there is a success, I want to pass the uh, file to the put file processor. When there is a failure, I want to stop my flow in the fetch file only. So let's connect the success relationship to the put file processor. If you see, there are two warning signs, one in the put file and one in the fetch file. So what it says, it says that the relationship is not found. If I go here in the relationship tab, we have already said that we want to pass on the success relationship to the put file processor, but for the other, we can terminate it here itself, or we can pass on to the other flow. Let's say if there is a failure, I want to raise a email notification or a Slack notification. I can connect any of these relationships to, to those processors. If you see now here, this is the red sign, which means that 
all the properties are properly uh, filled and this processor is now ready to get started. But you must have noticed that we haven't set any properties inside this processor. So let's go there and see what all properties are required. If you see, there's a property called file to fetch. There's an expression called as dollar absolute path slash file name. So this path is resolved using the list file processor. There's something called as a flow file attribute, which help us do that. We'll talk about that in detail in a few minutes. It has other properties as well. There's something called as a completion strategy, which says that what do you want to do when you have already read the data into NiFi? Do you want to move the file to some other location when the file has been read? Or do you want to delete the file? Or you don't want to do anything and the file will always be present in the source location. So we are not going to set any property, which means that the file will still stay in the source location. So these are few properties that is required. There's something called as a move conflict strategy. Let's say in the target location, we already have a file available with the same name. Then what do you want to do whenever you, you see such scenarios? Do you want to rename the file? Do you want to replace the file? Do you want to keep existing and uh, ignore this particular ingestion? Or do you want to fail the flow saying that there is already a file existing in a place. Let's say we are going to rename the file and we set an apply. Now there is the third processor called as a put file processor. It is still uh, showing a warning sign, which means there are some properties that are to be filled. Since put file is the last processor, we are going to terminate it, which means that we don't want to add any other processor after put file processor. So we can terminate the relationship, both the success and failure. And if we apply, if you see here, there's only one warning sign available. It says that the output directory is not defined. So we'll go to the property. We will set the output directory here as well. So let's say I want to write my data inside the out folder. And let's say I want to create a subfolder called as Australian weather. So I'm going to write my files in this particular folder in the output folder. There are other options as well, like uh, what do you want to do? Uh, if uh, there's already a file with the same name present, it says that I want to fail the flow. There is another option of creating missing directory. If we go to the uh, output, let me open this particular folder. Let me see the output folder. There is no directory available at this moment. So whenever we say a create missing directory equals true, it will create the directories, subdirectories over here. In the input, let's see what the data is. So if you see over here, there is a CSV file, which with the name of weather CSV. This contains the weather information of uh, Australia. Now let us apply this and start a flow. When we start the flow, it reads the path to all the files that is present in the directory that is configured in this processor. If you see, we only have one file available and let me list this. If you see here, there is a, if you see when we have started this processor, there is a output, which is a flow file. If I list it doing a right click, I can see that there is a flow file already present over here. What is a flow file? Flow file as per the NiFi documentation, it says that it represents a single piece of data in NiFi. It is made up of two components. Content is the data that is represented by the flow file and attributes are characteristics that provide information or context about the data. They are made up of a key value pair. Whenever we are going to uh, perform any operation in a processor, it will always output a flow file. Sometimes the flow file don't have any content, which means that 
in some cases where we don't want to uh, process any content, we just want to play around with the flow file attributes, then there won't be any content claim available. But if uh, there is a processor called as a fetch file, where we are going to actually read the data from a particular location, there would be a content claim available. In our case, since we have read the path of the file from the list file processor, if we see in the flow file, we see that there is no content available because we have not actually read the data. We just have read the metadata information about a file, which comes under the attributes tab. If you see, there are two attributes that I want to focus on. The first one is the absolute dot path, which gives me the input path location. And there's a other attribute called as a file name. This file name is the file that we are going to read from the fetch file processor. So this is the example of a flow file and let's get started with the other processor. Now we are going to read this file from the fetch file processor. If you see, we have already used the attributes given by list file processor called absolute dot path and file name. So let me start this processor. So once this processor has started, it read the file that is available in the directory that is configured in the list file processors. Now, let me see the content of the flow file, if it is available or not. If I go to this icon and go to detail, now you can see we also have the content available. The file has been read by fetch file processor. So we are able to view the content of the flow file as well as download the content of the flow file. Once we have downloaded it, we are able to read this file. So you see there is information like date, location, temperature, etc. Now, once we have read the file using the fetch file processor, we now want to move this file to another location. So we have already configured put file processor to move the data into this output folder under the Australia weather subfolder. So once I start this particular processor, it should move the data into output folder. If you see, we have already completed the flow. Now let me see the output. You can see that there's a new directory created called Australia weather. And inside that we already have this particular file ingested. So this is how processor works. You can read the data from some location. You can read the metadata from some location. You can configure it. And then finally, once everything is success, you can uh, push those data into the sync. In our case, this was a local file system. So we have moved our data into the local file system using the put file processor. So this is all about NiFi processors. Please like, share and subscribe for more such videos on Apache NiFi. Thank you.